Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا سبحانه وتعالى كل في الكتاب العزيز بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون Rabbi shrahli sadri wa sirli amri wa hlal aqtan lil minsan yafqahu qawli My dear brothers and sisters I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger Subhanallah Today is the last Jum'a of January To think 2020, the first month of 2020 has already passed. How time flies. You know, as a kid, I never thought I would see 2020. As a kid, you're watching movies, things like Terminator, where the future was 2020. And you're like, I'm not gonna get to a time where they have robots and these machines causing destruction. And SubhanAllah, we are here. Now there aren't robots causing destruction and havoc, but we still have destruction and havoc happening around the world. And within a month, subhanAllah, we've seen this. We've seen fires that burned through Australia, floods that took over Indonesia. We see um, earthquakes in places like Puerto Rico, an earthquake just last Sunday hit Turkey. And we see this destruction around the world. We see people dying. And then you see a legendary NBA star like Kobe Bryant who dies in a plane crash or helicopter crash. And the world mourns. Why? Why not for the other destructions? Because it's somebody we all know. It's somebody we grew up with. Someone who was athletic, young, had wealth, 
And when you see like somebody like that pass away, you think of your own mortality. You start thinking that, wait, death is around the corner. It's a reminder to us. It's a reminder to all of us that death is around the corner. It reminds me that, yes, you see people going on, the, on, on social media and so forth. They're going through this hardship that they're going through. And we think about the, the hardships that we go through. You know, subhanAllah, last year, speaking of 2020, today this year, today, this year marks the end of the war in Bosnia that happened in the 90s, the early 90s. And last year I was blessed to go with Islamic Relief to Bosnia, where we had a group of people 25 people from around the world, people from England, South Africa, USA, Canada, Bosnia, and we challenged ourselves. We challenged ourselves to go over 200 kilometers via foot, rafting, and biking. Why? To help those in need. We were raising money and awareness for those in need. And while I was over there, Every single day was challenging. Every day we would have a little group, halakha, and we'd talk about, reflect on the day. We said today was a very hard day. It was draining, it was challenging, but alhamdulillah, the fact that I know I'm bringing ease to someone else, it's rewarding. Which got me thinking of Surah Al-Insharah. And today I'm gonna inshallah talk about Surah Al-Insharah and the parables between the Surah and our journey over there. As you know, Surah Al-Sharah is the 12th Surah revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what's, what's amazing about the Surah, beyond the message, is we're in a, we hear this intimate conversation between the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah, or Allah is having with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'm gonna divide the Surah into three parts. The first four ayahs, the middle two, and the last two. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك So it starts off with a rhetorical question ألم نشرح لك صدرك Have we not expanded your chest? Have we not given you ease? This is to put the Prophet's mind is at ease This was a question not asked for an answer but to remind the Prophet that we have given you ease through the hardship that you're going through. And we see this, the, the expansion of the chest mentioned four times in the Quran. And one time to another prophet. When Allah told Fir'aun to go and talk to Fir'aun because he's transgressed against all bounds, what did Prophet Musa السلام, say? Rabbi shrahli sadri. Oh Allah, expand my chest. Because he knew he was going on a challenging task. And we know as people, as fathers, as community leaders, of people in society, that when you have a challenging task, you get anxiety. Your chest contracts. And here, Musa alayhi salam is saying, make it easy for me. Make, it, make, give me, you know, make me relax when I go approach this. And we see this everywhere. When I went on this journey to Bosnia, I was heading the delegation from the group from the US. And I was a little nervous. Country I've never been to, people I've never met. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead, lead them blindly. But once I got to meet the people, brothers from South Africa, the people from Canada, the people from England and so forth, and the US, it brought ease to me that they were nice and compassionate people there for a mission. So as uh, their brothers and sisters, as a reminder, always support your community leaders, the people in charge. Instead of adding to the problem and causing more anxiety, we should come up with solutions. And we removed from you your burden. Now we know the burden that was plaguing the Prophet ﷺ was the society, the immoral society. 
And how was that burden removed? With the revelation of the Quran and the um, and Islam. And we see this. This was the solution to the Prophet's problem. He used to go and escape to the cave, making dua and reflecting and meditating to find a solution to this problem. He didn't want to run away from society. He didn't want to ex accept the problems that society had. Instead, he wanted to help and come with a solution. And the Quran was that solution. And we see this, dear brothers and sisters, that some of us, in today's society, we become materialistic. Lots of us focus on what? Ourselves, ourselves, ourselves. Hence why the pictures are called selfies, because we were on focus on ourselves. Then there's some other people who think a little bit more and focus on their community, their neighborhood. And then there's other people who want to make change in society, make impact in society. And lastly, there's people out there, very few, who think about the hereafter as well. And they're thinking about the hereafter and how can I help give da'wah to help these people to get, to get there, to get Jannah. May Allah make us among those people. So we, dear brothers, have to go the same thing. We have to focus on the bigger picture. Yes, we focus on ourselves, but we focus at society at large. Which weighed down your back. There will be problems that will weigh down our back. There will be issues. But we have to realize we have to keep on striving and moving forward. When I was in Bosnia, one of the days we were rafting, like I mentioned. We were rafting in the coldest river in Europe. The coldest, cleanest river. You could drink from it from your hand. And I really did. We got to a cliff, we pulled the rafts to the side, and people started jumping off this cliff. That was probably, I'd say about as high as this, into the water, maybe a little higher. And one of the brothers from England, Brother Hassan, was making that jump. And when he hit the water, the water was so cold, it shocked him. And he started to freak out. So immediately, while I was taking pictures of him, I dropped my phone in the water and reached out to grab his hand and pulled him into the raft. And what happened was there was about this much water in the raft. And the, the phone immediately started to flicker, even though it was a phone that said it was waterproof or water resistant, it started to flicker. It stopped working. For me, that was a burden removed from my back. At first I was like, what am I gonna do without this phone? I can't take pictures, I can't communicate, I'm not gonna respond to people on WhatsApp. But then I realized that this was actually a burden on me, it was weighing me down. And once that phone was gone, Alhamdulillah. I got to enjoy the trip. I got to talk to people, I got to see people. Sometimes we get too bogged down with our electronics. I know I sound very hypocritical while I'm holding a, a laptop in my hand while I'm giving this khutbah. But that's what it is, dear brothers and sisters. We're on our phones, we come home, we don't speak to our wives or our children or our husbands, our co-workers, our colleagues, our friends. Instead, our heads are down and we're looking on the phone. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm not saying phones are bad or technology is bad, but sometimes lay them down. Enjoy your surrounding, enjoy the people you are with. And we exalted your reputation. Jibreel came to the Prophet and he said, Allah has elevated, our master has elevated your uh, mention. Do you know how? The Prophet says, Allah knows best. Allahu Akbar. He said, whenever uh, your Lord's name is mentioned, the Prophet's name is mentioned next to it. SubhanAllah. If we look at everything we do when we mention Allah's name, the Prophet's name is mentioned right next to it. In our idhan, in our salah, when I open the khutbah, Every time we mention the Allah's name, the Prophet's name is mentioned right next to it. Think about this, dear brothers and sisters. This orphan child who was born in Arabia, in the deserts of Arabia, now his name is mentioned 1400 plus years later 
all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean all the time. Think about every time zone, every adhan, every salah being made, how vast the Muslim ummah is. You know, when I was in Bosnia, for those who don't know the younger people, Bosnia is a Muslim country in Europe. So we get there late at night, and I go to the person at the hotel front desk. I said, where's the uh, closest masjid so I can pray Fajr? He says, there's one right around the corner. So Fajr comes, I hear the adhan, I go around the corner, I pray Fajr. I'm leaving the masjid. I'm walking out after I pray, and guess what I hear? The adhan again at the other masjid down the street. To think in one city block, the adhan is made, salah is made, and then it's done again. Imagine every time zone that the Prophet's name is mentioned throughout the world. This is just in one city. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Then surely with hardship comes ease. Surely with hardship comes ease. This hits home for lots of us. We will all go through some hardship in our life. We might lose our job. A family member might pass away. We might go through some difficulties in our life. Emotionally, physically. But we have to know, dear brothers and sisters, that ease will be around the corner if we just wait. If we just wait. And sometimes what we are tested with is what we are known for. Maryam radiallahu anha, what was she known for? She was known for her chastity, her integrity, her honesty. And when she was pregnant with Isa alayhi salam, what happened? Society started judging her for that same exact thing. They judged her. They ridiculed her. They said, how could you do this? To the point where right before birth, she was hoping she would die in childbirth. Because it was hard. Imagine if all society turns on you. And then she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam. And he talked. It was revealed that he was a messenger, a prophet of Allah. And all that hardship went away. And the ease and the comfort were in Isa alayhi salam. You see in Bosnia, on the uh, first day of biking, we're biking up this mountain to this village called Lukmir. Now this wasn't just a simple hill, it was an actual mountain on gravel. And we're pushing and we're pushing and we're pushing hard. It felt like the mountain will never end. There was trees on both sides. I couldn't even see where the end of the mountain was. And my legs were burning. I normally don't stop on hills because I said if I stop, it's gonna be hard to start again. And I see an opening in the distance. And I tell myself, I'm going to slow down and stop at that opening. Because my legs, I'm, I'm getting fatigued. I, I don't know how long I can do this. So I get to the opening, and it opens up. And you see the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. These green pastures. There was a shepherd with his sheep. These rolling hills. It was, am it was amazing. And when I saw that imagery, this beautiful creation of Allah, I completely forgot the hardship I went through. I completely forgot the hill, the sweating, the pain. And if I knew this was the reward, I would have biked twice as high if I knew this was the reward, this beauty. Dear brothers and sisters, we just have to get over that hump, and then we will see the ease that Allah brings. So when you have finished with your immediate task, still strive hard, and to your Lord, turn all your attention. This last part focuses on us, dear brothers and sisters. It's talking to the Prophet and it's telling the Prophet after your hard day of giving da'wah and going and dealing with the kuffar and so forth, Come home and don't just sit down and relax. Turn your attention to your Lord. Turn your attention to your Lord. And we knew the Prophet ﷺ used to do this. 
Ibn Umar came to Aisha radiallahu anha and he said, tell me something amazing about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam." And she starts to cry. She starts to cry because she remembers an incident. When the Prophet ﷺ came to her and asked for permission. They were going to bed and he asked for permission. Do you mind if I, uh, if I um, be with my master? And Aisha radiallahu anha said, I love to be with you, O Prophet of Allah, but I love what you love. And she gave him permission. So he gets up and he starts praying. And as he's praying through the night, he starts weeping. And as he's weeping, his beard starts getting wet. And then puddles start forming on the floor from his tears. And Bilal, radiallahu anhu, who used to come every morning around Fajr time to get the Prophet he sees this. And he goes to the Prophet and he says, O Prophet of Allah, why do you do this to yourself? Why do you stand up all night, your legs get swollen, and you're crying all night? You've been forgiven for everything. You've been guaranteed Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ says, shouldn't I be a blessed servant? Shouldn't I be a thankful servant for this? Dear brothers and sisters, we have to have that same effort in our things. I know we have long days. I know we go through hardships. I know sometimes we're tired when we get home. But we have to remember that we have to still remember Allah and sit down and focus. Make sure we don't oversleep Fajr or Maghrib or Aisha, taking a nap early or so forth. We have to focus on Allah. You know on that day I was telling you we were biking Lukmir? It was a hard day, a very hard day for us. And I've done the, some of these trips before in other countries. We get to this village. This is the highest village in Bosnia. The highest village, living village in Bosnia. Guess how many people are in this village? 27 people. 27 people. That's the whole population. So when we showed up with our 25 people, we literally doubled the population of that village. And we were tired. But it was a day like today, it was a Jum'ah. And when we got there, we already made the intention that we will pray Jum'ah once we get to this village. So we put our bikes down, everybody makes wudu, and we go straight to the masjid. People didn't sit there and say, I'm going to take a nap, I'm going to do this. No, instead, they focused on what was important. I ask Allah to make sure that we focus on what is important on Him and Him alone. Akuli kuli hada wa sahbili wa lakum fanahu al-khafur rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu salam ala Rasulullah amma ba'd. For those who came in late, I started off the khutbah about talking about a trip we took to Bosnia. A trip me and 25 people went on a delegation with Islamic Relief to bring aid to those in need or bring, uh, uh, raise money to bring aid to those in need. And we, I did parables between Surat Al-Insharah and that journey. And I like to end every khutbah with one action item. Something that we can take home, that we just don't hear the khutbah and just go home and forget about it. So I'm giving everybody one simple action item, one thing to do to start with today. And that's the easy one. It's become a better person. Become a better person. What does that mean? I know sometimes it sounds a little selfish in a way, but I'm going to tell you to focus on yourselves. Focus on yourself so you are capable physically and mentally and spiritually to help those in need eventually. So I want everybody to focus to become a better person this Jum'ah. Go reach deep down and find what are the things that you need. You know, subhanAllah, when you get on a plane, if you've ever flown, they tell you what? Put the mask on yourself first so you can help the person next to you. We've heard that many of times, every single flight. And this is what we're going to do on this particular day. Focus on ourselves. Like I mentioned, when we went to Bosnia, 
right after, the day after we landed, we went to a place called Srebrenica. For those who don't know, Srebrenica is a place where a massacre happened where they killed 8,000 Muslims within a few days. They would line them up, pick them up wherever they at, and they would put them in the bus and take them there. Now, I saw some person when we, after we, with every, every year they find new bodies and they pray janaza on these, these bodies. And I, after we prayed janaza, we walked over and I saw this guy talking to a Turkish group. And he's speaking English. So I come over there and I listen to him. And he's telling his story. Now, he was a survivor of the war, but not of the war of that particular week, of that particular week. He sat there, him, his uncle and his father were picked up in a bus. They were taken to that location. They were taken out, they were tied up, and they were lined up. And they took everybody down. And what he said is, I felt something hit by my side. A bullet came and grazed me, and I fell to the ground. While everybody else was, was, was dead or moaning. Then he hears a soldier give a command saying, go out and take out anybody who was alive so there's no witnesses. So he's worried because the person right next to his head was moaning. And he see, hears a soldier walk by closely, and the soldier takes him out, the other guy. Then nightfall hits. Then he hears something the general is saying, and then they disappear, the soldiers. He's assuming they went to go dig a mass grave. So he gets up at night when they leave, and he escapes. And as, as I'm walking out with him after he tells the story, I said, why did you stay in Bosnia? You know, there's all these refugees and so forth. Why did you stick around here? He said, it's so, I, I became a better person by staying here. You know, yes, there was PTSD. There was emotional baggage that came with this, mental baggage. But I treated myself, and I wanted to make sure that something like this would never happen again would never happen again. He focused on himself. And then, now, he can help the community at large. So I ask Allah to make us among the people who focus on themselves. I ask Allah to make us among the people who become better to the community. I ask Allah to unite our hearts as a community. I ask Allah to make us among the people of Jannah. I ask Allah to make us among the people of Jannah. I ask Allah to forgive us for any sins we've committed. I ask Allah to forgive and, and forgive the dead among us. Ask Allah to heal the sick among us. Ask Allah to make us among the people of Jannah. Allah mahdina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barak li fi man aatayt, wa kinna sharran ma qadayt, fa anna qataqti wa la yakti alayk. Rabbana atina fa dunya hasna, wa fil aakhta hasna, wa kinna adab al-nar